Greetings, this is Father Sam Moorhead, Rector of the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in downtown Denver, Colorado. And welcome back to a Cathedral Chapter, our occasional series of videos reflecting on the sacred liturgy and the Word of God for Sunday celebrations. And this Sunday, the 25th of December, we celebrate the great feast, the solemnity of the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's Christmas Day, and what a joy it is to gather together, not only with family and friends, but as a people of faith, to adore and to worship Almighty God and to celebrate the birthday of our Lord come in the flesh. This weekend in the Sacred Liturgy, there are four different masses with different sets of readings that tell in different ways the great miracle of Christmas, the wonder, the marvel of the Nativity, of the incarnation of our God. On Christmas Eve, we hear the gospel of the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of St. Matthew. We hear how generation upon generation passed and how all of this made way and prepared for the coming of God in the flesh, that Mary would conceive by a word of God with her own free, full yes, she would consent and become the mother of the Redeemer. St. Joseph would play his part and that Jesus would come to save his people. Then, at the Midnight Mass, we hear the wonderful story of the birth of Jesus, traditionally held to be at midnight. So how appropriate that we come and hear the evangelist St. Luke tell us how that decree went out from Caesar Augustus so long ago during the reign of Octavian Caesar Augustus, and that the Cornelius was this, the governor of Syria, and that this edict went out that all the world was to be enrolled, and so families had to go to their home place. And so St. Joseph would take his wife, as intended, and the babe who was to be born, and they would be in Bethlehem. Jesus was born there in Bethlehem, and of course you and I know the story. There is no room in the inn, and so he is born into this world in a cattle stall, and he's placed into a manger. And this is the humble beginnings for our God, the mighty and the majestic one, who lives in light, inaccessible, who's wrapped in glory, but who does not deem it beneath him to be born into our world, into the mess of our world, the brokenness of our world, and be placed even among the animals. And there Our Lady St. Joseph rejoice on that night as the angels swell around and the heavenly hosts sing the glory of God. Then, at the first Mass of Christmas morning, traditionally called the Mass of the Dawn, we have the story of how the angels announce this good news to the shepherds tending their flock in the fields. And so the shepherds receive that first proclamation of the gospel. They go in haste, find the sign told them, a babe who would be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lay, lied in a manger, laid in a manger. And they see that, and they marvel, they worship God. And Mary treasures all these things, holding them together in her heart, for she knows that there is truly something special about this divine son, and she sees what God is doing. Then the rest of the masses of Christmas Day find us with the Gospel of St. Luke, that wonderful prologue that begins, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we're told that this Word, the second person of the Trinity, the Logos, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. This light has entered into the world, and though the world cannot understand it or grasp it, this is a light that makes us and all things new. So when you and I come to celebrate Christmas, we're celebrating the love of God made real and fleshed for us, that it is so near that we can behold him with a human face and receive the smile of God through the smile of this babe of Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph played their part, and now so too must you and I. Let us be prepared again this Christmas to receive into our lives, into our hearts, into our faith, the Lord Jesus, who is God made man, the Word made flesh. And let us choose to love him and to order our whole life, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our longing, our desires, everything to him. And because he comes to us small and humble and full of love and purity, let us offer back the same to him. I wish to you and yours a holy and blessed Christmas. May you be very close to the Lord Jesus and out of that love, may you then turn and be very close in love to your family members and friends. And wherever the Lord finds you this Christmas, may it be filled with many blessings and much grace. A happy Christmas to you all.